Hi, this is Austin. This is lab one for machine vision, basic camera functionality. This lab we will use the OpenMVH7. We will do two tasks. First task will be to program the OpenMV to take a picture every 10 seconds and store it on the SD card. Second task will be to take a picture every time a button is pressed and store it on the SD card. So this is the push button lab over here. We have our OpenMV sensor, our USB cable, a normally closed push button, and three different colored wires. So first of all, we're going to take the yellow wire over here. This will be for our signal. We're going to plug it into the upper right port over here in the corner. And then we're going to plug the other end into one of the button sides over here. Okay. This orange wire will be our ground. The ground will connect in the bottom left port over here in the corner. And then we're going to connect this other end to the other side of the push button. Like that. This green wire will be our reset wire. It's going to go in the bottom right port over here in the corner. So we'll plug that in. And this will hang loose for now, but when we want to reset the OpenMV camera, we can just take this green wire and touch it to the button terminal right there to reset the camera. And that's it for the setup. Okay, starting from the top, we import the various libraries, and then we establish RTC, which is real-time clock. This next chunk over here sets the camera mode. RGB is color. Uh, QVG, I think, is like 300 by something, something pixels. And then the time is to allow changes to take place. The rest of the code is in, in this while true loop. Uh, same thing, we set the camera again, but this time we use uh, grayscale. The reason we switch from grayscale from RGB is just to tell the difference of when the camera was starting up. And when we compare frame size, set underscore frame size to the previous one, we have QVGA before and VGA. I believe VGA is smaller in pixels. All right, on line 26, we use RTC date time. What we're doing is we are using the real time clock to set the uh, name of the screenshots. We'll show that a little bit later. For now, this next line on line 29, it sets the first part of the screenshot here highlighted in this little box, snapshot underscore. So every screenshot will have that name for it, snapshot underscore. After the underscore, we need to use a real-time clock to set the second part of the name. And each snapshot must be different. So what we do is we use a for loop over here and we borrow DT file name. DT file name is just snapshot, the first part of the uh, screenshot name, plus, oh shoot, plus string item. So this string item is in the for loop over here. It will be different every time the for loop iterates. And finally, we round it all off with this box over here, dot JPG, save it as a JPG format picture. And then we package it into DT file name. Finally, down here on line 37, we take the snapshot over here with this command. And then we use the DT file name package right here to name each picture. So each picture will have a different second part of their name. No two pictures will have the same name. And we keep it simple with just a delay of 10 seconds on line 38. So let's run the code over here and the bottom left over here 
see this icon, it'll connect to the OpenMD when you click it. Let's click it. And then this green owl will run the code. So let's get ready. Let's do a blue screwdriver. So once we're ready, we're going to hit the green arrow in the bottom left corner. And then you'll also see the video briefly start up over here. Uh, between each 10 second interval, it'll play a little bit. Anyway, hit the green arrow. There's the screwdriver shown in the upper right. And it took the picture right there when it freezes. Let's try the green pen for the next shot. Okay, green pen's good. And then let's do a pair of pliers for the next shot. Once we're good, we can hit this red X over here. And that'll stop the script. And then we can disconnect it over here by hitting the little plug icon. And then we are going to view our pictures, but we have to reset the OpenMV. So take this green wire over here, touch it to the yellow wire, metal on metal contact to ground it. You'll see it flash in the corner there, right there. And hit reset. And that's, here's our photos right here. Here's our first photo, which is the screwdriver. Second one was that green pen. And third one was the pliers. And that is the 10 second delay. Starting from the top, we import the various libraries. And then we establish RTC, which is real time clock. This next chunk over here sets the camera mode. RGB is color. Uh, QVG, I think it's like 300 by something, something pixels. And then the time is to allow changes to take place. The rest of the code is in, in this while true loop. Uh, same thing, we set the camera again, but this time we use uh, grayscale. The reason we switch from grayscale from RGB is just to tell the difference of when the camera was starting up. And when we compare frame size, set underscore frame size to the previous one, we have QVGA before and VGA. And I believe VGA is smaller in pixels. All right, on line 26, we use RTC date time. What we're doing is we are using the real time clock to set the uh, name of the screenshots. We'll show that a little bit later. For now, this next line on line 29, it sets the first part of the screenshot. Here highlighted in this little box, snapshot underscore. So every screenshot will have that name for it, snapshot underscore. After the underscore, we need to use a real time clock to set the second part of the name. And each snapshot must be different. So what we do is we use a for loop over here and we borrow DT file name. DT file name is just snapshot, the first part of the uh, screenshot name, plus, oh shoot, plus string item. So this string item is in the for loop over here. It will be different every time the for loop iterates. And finally, we round it all off with this box over here, .jpg. Save it as a JPG format picture. And then we package it into DT file name. Finally, down here on line 37, we take the snapshot over here with this command. And then we use the DT file name package right here to name each picture. So each picture will have a different second part of their name. No two pictures will have the same name. And we keep it simple with just a delay of 10 seconds on line 38. And then we will click the green arrow over here to run the code. And you can see a still over here to indicate that it is working. 
We'll keep the serial monitor open over here as well. All right, and then when we press the blue button, it should take a photo and then it should display on in the serial monitor. You also see a little red flash over here in the corner. So let's do our first picture is gonna be, let's do this green marker over here. All right, took a little bit, but on popped up in the serial monitor. And we'll do the second picture of this little flyers thing. You can see in the uh, upper right hand corner over here, you can see the picture, a little preview of the green marker. Oops, now it triggers off on the button of delay. And there we go. And there we go. You see the little preview of the pliers in the upper right. So let's stop the code over here by hitting the red X. And we will disconnect. This is where the reset button or the reset pin over here comes in handy. We take the green wire over here. We just touch it to the orange terminal over here, uh, right where the wire metal on metal contact. You'll see a little green flash over here on the OpenMV as it reboots. All right, so that reset the OpenMV. And then it popped up the OpenMV SD card. Here's the images folder. We'll enter there and there we go. Here's our first screenshot of the marker. And this is our second screenshot of the pliers. And that's about it. You can repeat as much as you want.